I was recently asked how to produce a greeting card design using Affinity Photo. Whilst this individual had been designing cards for a long time in Photoshop, they were struggling with Affinity Photo. To help, I decided to make this video explaining how I created a simple greeting card template that can be reused. The first step is to create a new document in Affinity Photo, which we'll use for the design. You can do this by selecting File and then New from the Photo Persona menu. This displays the New Document dialog, where you can choose from the existing document presets. I'm just going to use the default A5 document from the Print section for the basis of my template. When you select a preset, you can switch between portrait and landscape layouts using these icons at the top of the list. I'll use the portrait layout, which will produce a landscape card when it's folded in half. I can then click the Create button and we see the new empty A5 document. The next step is to add some design guides that will help position the photo and text we'll be adding to the card. We can do this in the View menu by selecting the Guides option. This opens the Guides dialog where we can add new horizontal and vertical guides. I'll add my first vertical guide by clicking the small icon below the Vertical Guide list. When I click it, you can see the new guide added in the centre of the document. It then also appears in the list, with its position set to 50%, which is a default value for new guides. When I'm doing the design for a greetings card, I find that it's best to work with percentages. This is much easier than trying to work with the exact measurements. You can switch between the two by clicking the percent option at the bottom of the dialog. Although we can now see this guide on the document, I want to stress that it won't be printed. It's only displayed on the screen as a design aid. In fact, we can hide the guides at any time by using the keyboard shortcut of Command and Semicolon on a Mac. Or if you're using a Windows PC, it's Control and Semicolon. You'll also find an option to hide the guides or show them in the View menu if you prefer to work with that. At the moment, we've added a single vertical guide in the centre of the greetings card. This will help us to line up the elements in the centre of the card, but we still need to know where the middle of the card is when it's folded. For that, we can add a single horizontal guide by clicking the icon below the horizontal guide list. Now we know where the fold will be, we can work on the designs for the front and back of the card separately. I'll start with the design for the back of the card, where I want to add some text. First, there's the title of the photo that I'll be using, and I want to position that in the centre of the card, so I need to add another horizontal guide to position that. Notice that the new guide appears in the same position as the first, so I need to move it. I can do that by clicking on the guide in the list, and then double-clicking. I can then enter a new value, which for this guide is 75%. This moves the guide to the correct position, which is 75% of the way down the document. The other element that I want to appear on the back of the card is my name and website. To help me line up those, I'll add another horizontal guide. This time I'll set the position to 95%. With the guides in place, I can close the dialog and I'm ready to add my text. To add the text, I'll use the Artistic Text Tool in Affinity Photo. You'll find this in the Tools palette on the left of the interface. It shares a space with the Text Frame tool, which is intended for larger blocks of text, so you may find that that's visible instead. If it is, click the bottom right of the icon to expand the group. You can then choose the Artistic Text tool from the list. To add my text to the card template, I'll click once on the document, which opens a text field where I can type. Then in the toolbar, I can choose the font I want to use, as well as the size of the text. For this card, I'm using 14 point Arial font. Now I can enter my text, which is Sunrise at Aula Tour. I'll then add the words Peak District on the new line. I can then select all the text and centre it in the text field. Now I want to reposition the text field on the card. I'll select the Move tool for this, which is found near the top of the tools palette. When I have the Move tool selected, we see a blue box around the text. I can then position my mouse pointer over the text, then click and drag to move and position it. As I drag it over the guides, you can see that it snaps into position so that it's centred. 
The reason this happens is that I have the snapping option turned on in Affinity Photo. If this doesn't happen for you, go to the View menu and choose Snapping. Then in the dialog, turn on the Snap to Guides option, after which you can close the dialog. Now let's add my name and website address to the back of the card. As before, I'll click the Artistic Text tool. I can then click on the card, which produces the new text layer. I'll then enter my name followed by the website address. After that, I'll select the text using my mouse and center it as before. Then I'll change the font size to 8 point. And because the text has been added as a separate text layer, I can easily change the characteristics like the font, size and weight in the future, as well as the text itself. Note that I've created the design for the back of the greeting card. Let's work on the design for the front. To do that, I want to rotate the document through 180 degrees using the Rotate command. I just need to click the Document menu and choose Rotate Clockwise by 90 degrees, and then I'll repeat this a second time. Now before I add the image to the front of the card, I want to add a new horizontal guide to help center it. To do that, I'll open the Guides dialog from the View menu again. I can then click the icon to add a new horizontal guide. This positions the guide at the default 50% setting, so I'll need to enter a new value, which is 75%. When the guide is in place, I can close the dialog. I'm now ready to add the new image to the greeting card. The best way to do this is using the Place command, found in the File menu. You'll see why this is better than using Copy and Paste in a moment. We now see a dialog where I can choose the image file that I want to add to the card. Next, I position my mouse pointer and click once to add the image to the document at that point. Then using the Move tool, I can resize the image and position it using the guides if I need to. The only problem I have now is that we have the word sample written across the photo. But here's the smart thing about using the Place tool. I can still edit the original image. All I need to do is double click the image on my card to reopen it. We then see two tabs open in Affinity Photo. We have the original greeting card template we've been working on, and then we have the embedded image document we've just opened. I can now see the different layers in the image, allowing me to hide the sample text. Then I can close the document and return to the card template, and the watermark is gone. If I double click the image a second time, it reopens, and we can still see the hidden watermark layer. This is because when I used the place command to add the image to the card, it created a copy of the image file and embedded it into my card template. This embedding behavior is controlled by the placement policy, which you'll find in the file menu. Here we have two options, which are to embed a copy of the image or create a link to it. Linking to an image file creates a smaller file size but it does mean that any changes you make to the original image file also affect everything that's linked to it. If we use the embedded option instead, it creates a copy of the image file and embeds that into the document. This does produce a larger file size, but you don't run the risk of breaking the link or having something change that you don't want to. Let's close the image now and continue with our card template. I now want to add a couple of fold marks on the centre of the card to see where to fold it. An easy way to do this is using the Affinity Photos Rectangle tool. Let's select that and magnify the card to 200%. I can then click and draw my rectangle, which automatically snaps to the centre guideline. If I hide the guide by pressing Command and semicolon, you can see the rectangle. Now because this is a shape layer, I can still change the colour of the line to light grey, so that it isn't as obvious. I'll then repeat this on the other side of the card, so that I can make a straight fold. When the card's design is finished, you can choose to export it as a template file to make it easier to reuse in the future. Something else that you might like to try is embedding your image inside of text. Watch this video next to find out how easy this is to do. Thanks for watching today, and don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. I'll see you soon for another video.